<laughs> right, if you're finished with those comments, we will move along to our final speaker tonight, Frank Salas. Frank would like to share a feat of strength. He says that almost dying made him stronger. And this is a story I think we would probably all like to hear about, so I'd like to hear more about that. He's giving a very special speech tonight. Although it is Project 8, Getting Comfortable with Visual Aids, which is five to seven minutes, this is actually his 10th speech. So this is a big accomplishment. He has completed the competent communicator manual, and he can go on to the next level if he wishes to. So please give a warm welcome to Frank Salas, People Who Inspired Me in 2014. Frank Salas. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. You're doing a very wonderful time for your first time. Fellow Toastmasters, very welcome guests, and especially Mechelani, Julieta, and Amy. Thank you for coming out and supporting me. I, pr I truly appreciate it. So in 2014, I had an awesome year like I always do. Every year gets even better and better. Now, at this time of year, I always make sure that I reflect on what's going, what did I do this year, and where am I going to be next year? We've got two weeks left in the year, and it's a wonderful time to reflect. It's the holidays, you see a lot of family, you see a lot of friends, you do a lot of bonding. It's just a cool time of the year. And reflecting upon this year, there was quite a few people who inspired me, and I'm actually inspired every day. But I'm going to share with you some of the people who inspired me on another level. Um, the first person I want, want to talk about is George Clooney. So George Clooney is somebody... <laughs> George Clooney is somebody who I have on my personal roundtable when I have conversations with myself. I take advice from him, an imaginary George Clooney, what would he do? Um, I just aspire to be like him in certain ways. Uh, he's a gentleman of leisure. He always has on some nice suits, always looking fly. He's always hanging out with some nice ladies. He is charming, he's handsome, he's smooth, people like him, he's a likable dude. He's very hardworking, he's also a political activist. and. Recently this year, he had a big change in his life, but before I go into that, I want to tell you what his life was like. So he was an actor, got started in the late 70s, early 80s, but his first big hit was obviously an ER from 1994 to 1999. Backtrack just a little bit real quick, in 1993, he divorced his first wife. And so, what better way to get back at your ex-wife than to be the heartthrob stud on <coughs> ER, be the doctor? <laughs> I don't see a better way. So during this time, he captivated the nation for five years, and he landed a couple movie roles. The biggest one was actually Batman and Robin. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that yeah. horrible movie. <laughs> Worst Batman ever, right? But. It was the highest grossing film that he's uh, ever done at, up until that point, or in his early career. So it made him a lot of money, got him a lot of exposure, and people pay to see Batman. And people wouldn't pay to see Batman, people pay to see George Clooney. He sold that movie. No one came to see Chris O'Donnell or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Alicia Silverstone. No one came to see that. They came to see the Cloonster, man. <laughs> That's what they wanted to see. Now, at that point in time, he was obviously a heartthrob already. He dated a plethora of gorgeous, amazing, wonderful women. <clears throat> but he never married, he just was always non-committal. They actually poked jabs at, jabs at him at all of his interviews, on late night talk shows and magazines. It was kind of a thing, it was a known thing. Um, that being said, when it came time to be out there, be out and about and just enjoy and sow his, his roots or enjoy, enjoy himself, he definitely did that. His biggest accomplishment to me, something that I look up to for, look up to him for, is he dated Stacy Keebler. I don't know if you guys know who Stacy Keebler is. She is a WWE diva, which <laughs> so she's a model, she's an actress, she's gorgeous. So he dated her for two years um, and broke up with her in 2011. Now at this point he is 51. So he's 51, still good looking, still handsome, still rich, does an awesome job, awesome lifestyle. But he pretty much dated all the hot actresses in, in Hollywood. He randomly meets this gorgeous woman uh, in, when he's 52, and she's 35 at the time. And she is from a well-to-do family. She has a bachelor's in uh, law from Oxford University. She has a master's in law from NYU. She's gorgeous, she's gorgeous, she's gorgeous. She's a, ph a ph 
philanthropic person. Uh, she does a lot of community service. She's an author. She's an accomplished woman. And she's got the beauty and brains. She's what we call a unicorn. They don't exist. <laughs> you, hear, you hear about it? <laughs> you hear about it? Ne never happens. <laughs> she's, she's never been married. She doesn't have any kids. Wow. At 36 years old. So at 53, he decided to get married to this woman. And for me, that was awesome because, and very life changing because I always thought, okay, yeah, let's just play the game up and then die, whatever. But now there's an end tunnel. I, like he proved it to me. There's a way to end it. Now, that's, that's, that's a really big accomplishment for him that really inspired me this year. My second person that inspired me this year is Grant Cardone. He is a motivational speaker. He's a multimillionaire. He is a New York Times best-selling author. He's based in Miami. My, I'm sorry, he's based in Miami. And this year, he did two really big things. Number one, he started his own private jet airline. So if you want to fly private, you can do that with Grant Cardone's company. Um, on his private jet, and sometimes with Grant Cardone, um, which is really cool just to share a three, four, five, six hour plane ride with someone who is gonna motivate you, who is gonna get you to that next level and just even converse with that guy. Um, he started his own digital broadcast network this year um, where he contacts other power players from other industries, so real estate, finance, whatever your game is, he's got that top dog on his network. You pay him 20 bucks a year and you can listen to all his podcasts, all his shows, you have complete access. You can even win a chance to fly with him for free if he's in your city and you like his post on Facebook, if you comment. So that's a really cool thing. You need to follow him at, at Grant Cardone, no space, at Grant Cardone. Really enjoy all of his content. The third person that inspired me was a gentleman who's exactly my age. He's 27 years old. His name is Henry Sehulo. This guy was a UFC, he had a UFC debut this past Saturday and he won. So. The guy that he fought was already an experienced UFC fighter, and Henry Cejudo is actually the world's, or America's youngest gold medalist for Olympic wrestling. So whenever you graduate, whenever you graduate high school, you gotta go to college, then you gotta go get drafted by the United States Olympic team, you gotta train with them. Henry went straight from high school to work with, uh, with the Olympic team for three years. So the biggest thing that I learned from him was first, you have to sacrifice. When you sacrifice, you're going to have to struggle. Then when you struggle, you're going to suffer. But just before you've had just enough suffering, you have success. Once you enjoy your success, you must serve. Because when you serve and you help other people, you become more successful. So that's what I learned from Henry. Henry actually speaks to the kids who are at risk, youth, and in his neighborhood where he grew up, and he does that for free. That's all that he does. Uh, finally. We have somebody in this room right now, Ivy. Ivy inspired me whenever she locked up on her table topic. She was up here for 20 to 30 seconds, just blanking, and she just powered through it. It was just awesome. Um, so I, I respect you tremendously for that. I learned to be more calm, cool, and collected. Um, also, Chung Yi. Chung Yi does, is not a native English speaker, and this guy does speeches here. So. I wouldn't go to Taiwan and do a speech in you know, Taiwanese or whatever, they, Cantonese, whatever they speak over there. I wouldn't do that. I think that's really brave for him to come to America and not even be his first or second language. I think that's crazy brave for him to do that. Um, and all of you guys inspire me every week when you guys come up here. We're all at different levels. And the better you guys get, the better I get. And I just want to see everybody grow, not just you know, certain people. Keep the effort up. Keep coming every Tuesday. Bring the heart, bring the swagger. Uh, Madam Toast Manager, thank you so much. Congratulations, Frank. That's amazing to get all the way through 10 speeches. If you would fill out your comment cards for Frank. And while you're doing that, I would just like to acknowledge him because he had a whole video presentation planned and due to technical difficulties was not able to do that. And you would never have known that. He just stepped right up and just went on with it like nothing happened. So that was a great example you set for us. Thank you. Well, was everyone uh, on time? Uh, unfortunately.